Well, hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video. Today we're going to answer a question that I get asked not as frequently as I once did when we're dealing with closed cell two pound density foam and we're doing it in a stud wall or any wall or roof assembly where we're not covering over top of the studs or the roof framing, whether or not the actual framing itself is a vapor barrier. And if it is, how much and what would and what should we be doing? Like there was great controversy about this uh, 15 years ago when I was, when Jones was young and I was young in the industry, uh, there was great debate as to whether or not there needed to be a secondary coating over top of the stud faces or the studs themselves. That's when you're doing a closed cell two pound foam between wood framing. And obviously in certain climates with open cell half pound foam, especially when you're just putting on uh, three and a half or four inches or, or five and a half inches and you've shaven the skins off and the cells are open. Obviously in those situations for the lifespan of the wall assembly, uh, you should be using some sort of a plastic vapor barrier or a paint on vapor barrier or what have you. But uh, the question is answered very quickly in this test report that we're gonna get into. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the RDH Building Science Laboratory report where I did this on the greatest Intel drop a few videos back on their uh, extensive 17 page report here on spray foam non vented and there's two really good nuggets of information pertaining to framing because they have to address this here in the roof assemblies whether you've got 2 by 10s 2 by 12s TJI engineer trusses something that doesn't allow you to um, cover it entirely and this is exactly what they're saying right here so spray foam stacked framing spray foam adhered to the framing makes an excellent air barrier right however there are some areas where spray foam cannot be installed such as side by side or stacked framing members that will result in air leakage uh, pathway between the framing in the wall or between the framing or different assemblies example sloped roofs and gable ends a continuous bead of sealant installed between the framing members during construction or a layer of tape or flashing membrane installed continuously on the interior surface of the wood post construction are the two preferred options for sealing the gap between the framing against air leakage alternatively in the attic spray foam can be encapsulated uh, encapsulate the built-up framing to form a continuous air against leakage. So what are they talking about? Let me scroll to a picture. Here would be a picture of where you can encapsulate it. So imagine that this framing is directly connected to the outside and that it's not going to affect the drywall. The drywall is going to be on a dropped ceiling system lower down. In these situations, the closed cell foam can go directly over top of where you've got stacked framing, whether it's single or duals. They're talking about the air leakage between the studs. Two by six, two by 12, doesn't matter. And they're saying that when you can, you should roll over this. Obviously, you know, helps with thermal bridging, but it's the air leakage getting to the substrate to the outside. So when you can, you go over top of it. But what if you cannot? If we scroll down here, what if this is your typical wall construction and you can't? Well, then uh, you've got to put caulking and sealant to stop the air leakage from going through the doubles, right? So we've talked, I've talked about this many times in old videos. You can go check out my old videos on whether or not spray foam is a vapor barrier that's in the walls playlist. And we go over all right, the spray foam is a vapor barrier. Closed cell two pound foam between the studs is a vapor barrier. But what are you going to do about air leakage where all the wood to wood joints are? So that means double top plates, single bottom plates, um, headers, triples, doubles in the wall. Well, that's exactly what they're saying. Use sealant uh, or tape or what have you. Now, I prefer to do a high grade uh, sealant that is going to go into the joint. Uh, and it's going to air seal it very, very well, and it's going to stay flexible, and it's not going to break up. They're saying don't use something cheap that's going to break and crack and split as the lumber starts to move. So they're talking about a two-step method, maybe put a sealant in and then put tape over top of it to protect it, because when you don't, drywallers will slide their sheets around and disrupt the sheets. Very legitimate uh, points to be made. Now, the question begs, 
are these woods part of the vapor barrier assembly or not? Is this going to flow moisture through it? And that's exactly what they're going to address in this next paragraph. Okay, so here's the section on stacked framing that we just saw. Now here's vapor permeance of wood framing. In unvented spray foam roof assemblies where medium density spray foam fills the cavities between the structure and the interior of the structure is left exposed, it is clear that medium density spray foam has sufficient vapor control to meet code requirements. But there is some uncertainty regarding the vapor permeance of the rafters, or in this case, the studs, right? This is a common question that has been addressed previously to show that wood framing does provide sufficient vapor control. As with most other Hygroscopic materials, the vapor permeance of wood varies depending on the surrounding relative humidity. An Exovo test report in 2009 measured the vapor permeance of 2x4 and 2x6 wood framing in accordance to the ASTM E96 test under both dry 0% relative humidity and 50% relative humidity as well as 100% uh, cup conditions. The results are shown in the table below to meet the prescriptive vapor barrier requirements of the national building code vapor permeance of the structure must be less than 57 nanograms uh pascal or one us perm all right so here is the chart so two by four framing is getting 0.63 perms so one and 0 0.9 0 0.8 0 0.7 0 0.6 anything under a one is a vapor barrier and in the sense uh and the with the uh, Pascal reading, nanogram reading here, anything 60 and under. So 60, 59, 58, 57, so on and so forth. So we're seeing here that we're under a perm and we're under 60 nanograms. Uh, then when they bump up the 100% relative humidity, it just goes up to 0.72, so we're still within it. Dry cup on 2x6 at 0% and 50% is 0.5 and 30. So, well, you know, this is this is half of where they need to be. And then at 100% saturation at 50%, they're still right at the right at the line, which these are not conditions that you would live in, not on 100% relative humidity. 50%, yes, perhaps. But even in 50%, it's still a vapor barrier. All right. Another source of material data for wood vapor permeance is ASHRAE vapor permeance tables. Several wood species <clears throat> have vapor permeance test data on transverse wood grain samples at a range of relative humidities for all transverse wood measurements tested at a relative humidity of 70% or less. The vapor permeance of six inches of wood ranged from 0.1 perm to one perm. So well within the range of being a vapor barrier. This means that based on the test results and available literature, the framing does meet the vapor barrier requirements in unvented roof assemblies with the full R value installed of medium density spray foam insulation. The vapor permeance of OSB as found in the web of TJI joists, this is important, would also meet the vapor permeance requirements as per OSB vapor permeance values found in the ASHRAE uh, manual. So there you have it, folks. The wood is actually going to be a vapor barrier. So going back to our original picture, you put medium density foam, whether it's in a wall or in a roof, and you do not roll it over top of the wood but you're just between like we have in every single wall application caulk these seams so the air is not going through them and i would be doing this whether you're in a cold weather climate or hot it doesn't matter you want the same effects for air conditioning and moisture movement from out to in or in to out stop the air leakage that's your number one path of how water is going to move try to move through a wall and then once these are caulked, you do not need to worry that the studs need an additional coating of tar or membrane or something else in order to boost them. They have more than enough uh, vapor permeance with normal framing. So this is exactly how a log cabin works. There's enough insulation value in the logs and enough vapor permeance that they're not dripping wet and causing building degradation and breakdown. So there you go. If you've ever wondered whether or not the studs are part of the assembly on a vapor barrier. They absolutely are. So click, like, share, subscribe. 
share this with somebody that's interested in spray foam. This is your number one source for getting information on the internet for closed cell, medium density foam on spray foam. So thank you for this, sticking around, and we will see you on the next video.